In this lesson, we're learning about the basics of chemical reactions. Now, from the very beginning in chemistry, most students learn that chemistry is defined as the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. And so one of the big topics that we learn about in chemistry uh, has to do with what actually matter is. And so in my course, we spend quite a bit of time at the beginning learning about atoms and the structure of atoms and uh, then we we take that uh, that knowledge and we learn about molecules so how to write formulas and name compounds uh, that's matter and the structure of matter well in this lesson we're starting to learn more about the changes and so when we talk about changes primarily we're interested in chemical changes chemical reactions are the principal way that matter undergoes meaningful changes and so even if you haven't been in, in in the laboratory today, you've experienced lots of chemical reactions. So we can say, for example, that uh, when you ate a meal today, you probably digested the food in your stomach. And so you ate the food, and then the acid in your stomach uh, broke down that food. That's a chemical reaction. And then there are more reactions that take place in the cells where they extract the energy from that food. We can also talk about uh, starting a car. We know that... Uh, there is gasoline in an internal combustion engine. When you crank the vehicle, it causes some of that gasoline to be combusted. And so that's a, an example of a chemical reaction. Uh, we can think about plants and how plants grow. So the growth of plants is a good example. Uh, the death of plants, all these involve complex series of chemical reactions. Maybe uh, cooking. A lot of cook, in fact, most cooking involves. Uh, heating things up in a chemical reaction. So there are lots and lots of chemical reactions around us beyond the ones that we uh, carry out or see in the laboratory. Now, we know that not all changes are chemical reactions. For example, if we take a piece of paper and just tear it up, that's just a physical change because there's no fundamental change in the molecular structure of that paper if you tear it up. You're just basically making it uh, smaller or taking it and tearing it into smaller pieces, I should say. On the other hand, if you take that piece of paper and burn it, well, that is a chemical change. Now, it's hard for me to do this here on the screen, but I want you to imagine what would happen if we burned a piece of paper. What would you see? Well, you'd see a lot of things. You'd see uh, some signs of chemical reactions. Now, a, a chemical reaction is defined as a change in which one or more substances become one or more new substances. And so, like in the case of burning that piece of paper, at the beginning we see a piece of paper. That's one of the uh, objects we have at the beginning. And paper is made up of, of several substances. There's some cellulose, probably some other things in there, carbon compounds. And in this case, if we're burning the paper, we're also reacting it with oxygen from the air. Anytime you burn something, you react it with oxygen. And then what are the products? Well, we know that you have some ash. You will obviously see that. You're probably also going to see some smoke. And so there are several carbon compounds and uh, probably some water vapor there in that smoke as well. So that's just a, a basic idea of a very common chemical reaction. Now, when we said that there are some signs that a chemical reaction is taking place, there are at least six things that you can look for. Now, not all six of these will appear in every reaction, but we can expect to see several of them if there's a chemical reaction taking place. So when we burned the paper, we saw light given off in the form of a flame. So that's a common sign of a reaction a gas is given off. We would call that smoke in this case. Sometimes the gas is in the form of uh, bubbles. So you might see some bubbling taking place. Also, if something changes color, like a burning piece of paper changes from white usually to black, the odor changes. We have that smoky smell that's, that's produced. I think most of us understand that intuitively. If you take a sandwich and you put it in the fridge and, for, and forget about it, come back a couple weeks later and that sandwich has changed color, it's now green and it smells funny, you know that 
there's been a reaction taking place and you're probably not going to want to eat it. The texture has changed, most likely. So in the case of the burning piece of paper, it was maybe white and fluffy and soft. And now after it's been burned, it's brittle and it's turned into ash. So the texture is very different. Also a large change in temperature. That's a good sign of a chemical reaction as well. So it gives off a lot of heat or in some cases they get really cold. So these six signs are signs that a reaction is taking place. If you see several of these or even a couple of them, there's a good sign. Uh, that, that's a good sign that a reaction is taking place. Now in a uh, chemical reaction we have reactants and we have products. Reactants are what you have before the reaction. Products are what you have after the reaction. That's what's made in the course of the reaction. And so if we're burning that piece of paper, like we said earlier, the reactants would include the paper and the oxygen gas in the air. And the products would include the ash and whatever was in that smoke. So we have reactants and we have products. And in chemistry, we separate the reactants from the products by drawing an arrow, just like that. The reactants are always written on the left, and the products are always written on the right. So, for example, if you're baking a cake, the reactants might involve uh, some flour and some sugar and some water, oil, milk, baking powder, whatever it is you put into a cake, the, the ingredients. The product would be what? It would be the cake, wouldn't it? Because that's what you're trying to make. That's the product, uh, the goal of uh, what you're trying to make in a reaction. So let's talk about a chemical equation. Now, we write chemical reactions in the form of a chemical equation. There are some advantages to doing this. An equation is a, just a shorthand. It's what scientists used that includes symbols, formulas, and some other special characters uh, to help us talk about chemical reactions. Now, here's an example of a chemical reaction written in words. And so this is uh, called the thermite reaction. In my class, we uh, actually demonstrate this reaction and see it taking place. Aluminum metal is added to iron 3 oxide, which is basically rust yielding molten iron and aluminum oxide solid. So that's a chemical reaction written in word form, sentence form. Well, chemists usually talk about this equation using a chemical equation. So we use some symbols here. And here are the symbols that we use. So if you've taken chemistry already up to this point, you know that Al stands for aluminum. And then the iron 3 oxide is Fe2O3. Of course, Fe is your iron, and Al2O3 represents aluminum oxide. So these are, are chemical formulas and symbols that we use to talk about these substances. We also have those plus signs to show that something is being added. And then there's an arrow in the middle to show that the reaction is taking place. We pronounce that as yields, usually, although we can pronounce it as produces or makes or something else, but generally we say it, it, it means yields. Uh, there are some other symbols in here. The S tells us that aluminum is a solid in this case. All those S's stand for solid. If S is for solid, I'm sure you, you can guess what the L stands for. L stands for liquid. That's why we say it was molten iron in this case. There are some advantages to writing equations like this. First of all, it's shorter. It's a lot shorter than writing that whole sentence. It's also a universal language. Chemists all over the world, even if they don't speak the same language, understand the language of chemistry. So if we're collaborating with a scientist in some other country uh, that uh, doesn't understand English, for example, we can email them that equation and they'll know exactly what we're talking about. Now, in a chemical equation, we Throw in these special characters, as we mentioned here. The S is for solid. We already said that. The L is for liquid. 
And so I'm sure you can imagine what G stands for. The G stands for gas, and sometimes we have gases in reactions. AQ stands for aqueous. An aqueous represents something that's been dissolved in water. Now that's not the same thing as a liquid. Salt in its aqueous form means we've taken some salt and just dissolved it in water. Maybe you've done that at home. But liquid salt is very different. That would be molten salt that's been melted or that's been uh, melted down. Very, very hot. So uh, aqueous represents something a little bit different. We already talked about how the arrow means yields. Sometimes we can put things over the arrow to represent something else. So if you see this symbol right here, an arrow with a triangle over it, that means heat must be added to the reaction in order to make the reaction go. If you ever see a, an arrow with a lightning bolt over it, like in this case here, that means that electricity must be added in order to make the reaction work. It's a process called electrolysis. If you see an arrow with a, a chemical symbol or a formula over it, in this case I chose PT because platinum is a common one, but we could use something else, maybe an arrow with, oh, let's say KI written over it. That means that the potassium iodide or the platinum will be used as a catalyst. So it's not a reactant or product, it's being used as a catalyst. And, as we'll learn a little, a little bit later in this course, a catalyst is used to speed up a reaction without being used up. So we have lots of special characters here. Occasionally, and I'm almost out of room on this slide, so I'll write it at the very top, um, sometimes you'll see a double-headed arrow. And so the double-headed arrow looks something like this. If you ever see that instead of a normal arrow, that means that you're dealing with a reversible reaction. And lots of reactions in chemistry are reversible. You can have the reactants uh, get together to make some products, but then some of those products react with each other to go backwards and make some, some of the reactants again. And so these are some of the, uh, the symbols that we use in the structure of chemical equations to discuss chemical reactions.